attention. So, you know, don't be, what I want you to do and what I want you, like, don't feel pressured like you need to put a high lot size because right now it's not like your life depends on it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Keep that in mind. But don't, don't allow that to slow you down where you feel, where you feel well, like. I mean, it's, it's, it's still going pretty well, man. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm still ticking along. I'm probably, oh, this is the first week I've actually traded where um, I haven't been in any hev, heavy negative trade. You know, I was carrying that UJ for nice. over a month. Mm-hmm. Um, and previous to that, I was in um, a cable. <laughs> Which I was in heavy, heavy yeah. red, but I, you know how early I we were. We were hella early on GBP sales, man. Yeah, and I, I, but I, I mean, I um, I managed to. I wasn't over leveraged, so I was able to sort of manage my way through it. And once it it did start getting to a point where you know it, it was sort of trapping me, where I couldn't place any other trades, mm-hmm. I was just um, I was just scaling out, which uh. It works all right for me where I can get it to a point where I can start trading my way out of it. Yeah. Whenever I find myself in that position, two things I do, um, I either start scalping, right? So if I'm down $200, I'll start, I'll, I'll try to scalp the 200 right, to the point where I can at least break even on my negatives. Yeah, yeah. And, and Or, you know, if I can, if I'm down 1000 and I can scalp at least half of that and walk away with only half of the, the loss. Yep, I'm comfortable with that because, you know, at the end of the day, the way I calculate losses is like, if I'm in profit on the week, let's say I made $3,000 on the week, right? Yep. And I'm forced to close a $500 loss. One of the things I do is I don't pay that much mind to that $500 loss. What I'll do is I'll try to break it up in, in, in two weeks where – in the next two weeks, my goal is to make back that loss. Yeah. You know I mean? Yeah. So the goal is the goal is perspective. Remember, remember how I told you in the beginning when we started when we started analyzing the market on a uh, on a perspective base, right? Yeah. The way, the way you stay in the game is by having perspective, right? Okay. Um, trying not to get greedy. Trying not to pay too much mind to a win or a loss. If you do win or lose. You understand? Um, mm. The goal is how you respond by it. You know, if I made if if my goal was that I won and I did and I didn't expect to win that much, the goal is to learn how how did I win that, much, yes. right? Because that's the 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 importance is how how you're learning what's happening, not not what's actually happening. Make sense? Yeah. And so. Figuring out ways to do and make adjustments to your trades is key. You know, what helps me feel confident in when I take a trade? And even if I lose, why don't I get upset? Why? Because in my mind was I was confident in my trade. And I'd rather enter a trade with confidence than enter a trade with doubt. Make sense? Mm-hmm. I, don't yeah. like, I don't like making money on a trade that I was doubtful on. I like making money on a trade I was confident in. That's a well-executed trade to me, you know, as opposed to, let's say, you know, I doubted that USD CAD was going to drop, and, yeah, it dropped 5,000 pips, whatever. By You know, I'm exaggerating, but, um, you know, it's good to make money, but, you know, what happens if I would have lost that 5,000 pips in doubt, you know? I'm not doing yeah. myself any favors there. So that those are those are the perspectives that you have to have. Like, it's just like – you know, um, assessing the market as opposed to assuming. You know, I don't like I don't like when people say, "Oh, I hope that USD CAD is going to drop." No, I actually want you to be confident that it will drop. You know, because yeah. once, once you're confident that it will drop, what does that do? That adds to the that adds to that basket of you being a, being more confident in executing a trade, or let's say upping your lot size so you can make a little bit more money. You know, or Everything depends on what you preach. You know, you as an investor, if you're preaching, you know, if you're preaching consistency over gains, you know, at the end of the day, the consistency will overtake your gains as opposed to trying to, you know, shoot big every day. Like, yeah. you know, and that's what I'll be, I'll, I'll be focusing more on, you know. Um, 
Yeah, yeah look how much faster you've been growing your account. Think about this, Hemi. If you combine both of your accounts right now, you'll have way over, uh, you'll have five figures in your account to trade, which allows you to, on average, every trade you enter, trade at at a dollar lot standard. Yeah, and that's that's sort of where I'm 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 finding with with my size account. Like I'll get those really good money entries, but I might only have a like a thirty cent lot or something on it where. I sort of get a bit greedy and be like, oh, I don't, want, I don't really want to take partial, you know, because it's a good, good thing. Whereas if I was dropping it standards, yeah, you, know, you don't mind. But don't forget, don't forget, yeah, man. If you know, my one key rule, man, key rule, I always apply. Yo, any trade that increases my levels of stress, I buy something with it. I don't care if it's. Like, I bought me a Louis Vuitton wallet, you know? I, I don't fucking like nothing like that shit. But I bought it because I made 400 bucks off of a trade and it stressed me out because I had to hold it for, like, three days. So whenever I, I close that trade, I reward myself for it, you know? Um, my wife broke her phone and, you know, she, she needed a new phone. So I got her the iPhone XR. You know, I bought it with a trade that stressed me out. And these are things that just keep us conscious of the situation, you know, because in the end, Hemi, this is what you're doing it for. Like, you know, sometimes we're like, no, I want to focus on, on on adding money to my pockets when it matters. Like, I want to add two, three K a week. But, yo, sometimes you got to learn what it feels like to add four or five hundred dollars a week, four or five hundred dollars a month, you know. And, and there's nothing worse than regret. Now, I know you don't need the money, and I know Glory may not need the money. You know, Jose may not need the money. I'll take it. Huh? <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, I want you guys, even if it's even if it's $50, you know, go buy yourself a lunch. Go go out for a nice dinner with the family. You know, um, take one of your boys out and be like, yo, cheers, mate. You know, like this, this these beers were paid by, you know, GBP USD, man. Cheers, you know? Um, yeah. Fucking, I want I want you guys I want you guys developing that sense because that's how you that's how you keep honest to yourself and that's how you keep it real you know. Um, one of the things I hated was in the past when I was when I was in you guys' position. Um, one of the things I hated was when I would build an account, get it to a balance, and when I was thinking about taking out money, when I didn't take out the money, I blow it, and then it's like boom. Shit, man! I should have took that money out. You know, like you got to think of all the stuff you could have paid or bought with it. You know, yeah. it's like, man, look, yo, funny thing. Back in September, instead of taking out sixty grand, I took out thirty grand. And you know, in my mind, I was like, yo, I should have. You know what? I I'll keep thirty. I lost thirty. I stood with thirty in my pocket. Right. And now I'm over here trying to make an extra 30 just to leave to Florida with, you know, like that's that's a goal I set in my mind. But imagine if I would have took that out in September, I would not be thinking about making an extra 30 right now. I'd probably be thinking about, yo, whatever I can make is cool, you know, but that's just that's just how it works. Like now you start looking at it and, and, and you can get trapped in that should have, would have, could have mindset. But that's mm. why I say like that's why I say to you guys, if you guys are not understanding by now. Like, you have to be mentally prepared. That's why, like, like personal development is hella important to me, you know? Um, I have short-term memory. Like, I'm telling you, yesterday I lost $1,200 on GBPAUD, and it's like... And that was on a $1,300 account that I built from $50, you know? So imagine, those are the ones that hurt me the most, like, when I spend a lot of time building an account. But guess what? I put another hundred dollars and I'm back at 1300. It's, it's short term, bro. Like you got to get right back to it. Like, you know, how do you think, how do you think a professional baseball player makes his money? It's like he could strike out four times in one day and he gets back up the next day and he starts hitting again. That's what it's all about. You know, a soccer player, if he's a, if he's a scorer, you know, and he misses four of his score attempts, you know, he get back, he gets right back to it, man. Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant could have had the worst game or the best game. At the end of each game, he was back out there shooting hoops, you know? And it's just like, you got to have that mentality, warrior mentality. In my mind, one of the things that helped me every day, Hemi, too, 
is um, the day one mentality. Like every day is day one. You know, it don't matter. It don't matter if I'm if I'm up twenty thousand or if I'm up twenty dollars. Every day is day one. You know. Yeah. And and that's hella important. But let's talk about let's talk about identifying high lot zones. I'm going to take over the screen in a second. <coughs> Yo, damn, Glory. I can't wait to be in my backyard like that. <laughs> well, actually, let me get... Yo, Hammy, look look at how look how beautiful Florida is. Yeah, I, I think you showed me uh, that house you were going to get. Is it is it around there, right? It looks like it. It looks very similar. Yeah, her house is beautiful. You got to see yeah. that. She got a nice little pool table. When we go to Florida and you go out there, we're going to hang out in her house. <laughs> you got to bring the kids to Disney World, man. Yeah, man, for sure. Especially when they're old enough. Right. Look at Jose. Jose's like, yo, bring me an Australian shorty, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I was just going to say, like, yo, I can't wait till you move down here. You know what I'm saying? Because that's going to just change you know like it's gonna uh, grow you know oh like, uh, yeah I, I did have a question um jail because i noticed that and this is what i like as well i've noticed so much in the difference even in the mindset has changed because in the past i will I, I would be mad that i'll be so negative and it's like you have to go through that process i think i hold gold for like two weeks you know, and it eventually gave me profit. Was it worth the wait? I would say, yeah, because eventually I didn't close it. I remember I spoke to you early this week, and I was like, I think I'm just going to cut my losses. Even if it was a two cent, I was like, I'll just cut my losses. And I think, uh, and you said, just wait, you know, just, just be patient. And I guess I was just patient enough. And I realized that the mindset does change. <clears throat> Mine think about it. Think about this, Glory. What kind of damage would you have done to yourself if you would have taken the loss and watch it drop today? Oh, I would have been frustrated. I probably wouldn't even trade until Monday again. You see what I'm saying? Why do that yeah. to yourself? So you're gonna, you made the mistake of entering the trade early. You either have the choice of living up with the mistake that you are going to hold until it's in profit. That's why we don't over leverage, right? Or we're going to go ahead we're going to go ahead and make the decision and say, you know what, am I going to enter another trade at the top and write it back down or am I just going to take the loss? But if you know that it's going to, it's going to make it, excuse me, worse for you to hold that trick, to, to close that trade and watch it drop, you get what I'm saying? Might as well teach yourself what it takes to be a bit more patient and holding that trade or possibly, you know, in my mind, I don't like taking losses. I'd rather hold the trade till it till it's back in profit. Or what I do is I'll just put a higher lot size at the top and write it down to where I could close both of them. You understand? Yeah. But you know, a loss is not a loss till you close it. You understand that? That's 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 something a lot of people don't realize, but like a loss is really not a loss until you close that trade. You understand? Yeah. You you could have it floating there. Like, look, Jomar has closed. Jomar has turned his ten thousand dollar account to twenty four thousand dollars in the last two weeks, and he's still holding on to about like seventeen hundred dollars in floating losses. Wow. You get what I'm saying? So it's like yeah. the right lot size with the right. You could do it, man. There's no difference. That's what. How many times have you seen me flip a hundred dollar account since you guys started the fifty dollars account? I've done it six times. I've turned a hundred into a thousand or two thousand, and I take it out, live it up. You know what I'm saying? I, I want you guys. I want you guys developing that sense. You really don't need the money. You just need to know what to do when it presents itself. The, what are some of the most important things you guys have learned, um, Hemi? What name one of the most important things you've learned? Patience, man. <laughs> I, I, I think that's what we're going to all name our next child. Paciente. <laughs> you know, but 
That's the beautiful thing about it. How much did it cost you to learn that lesson, Tammy? Thousands. Woo! You know what I'm saying? But guess what? You'd rather pay that amount than pay whatever you're going to pay in the future to learn whatever lessons you're going to learn then. Exactly. I'm glad I've learned them now. Way better to learn them now. But check this out, Hemi. I'll show you some of the areas I'd enter, I'd enter my trades on a high lot. Right? So we've learned, we've learned in the past what? Market structure. Yeah. And I'm going to erase some of these nonsense so that I've been on the money with GU. Yeah, I made some good profit on today. I'll probably get out a bit early, but um, nah, it's all right. Profit's profit. 100%. You can never go broke taking profit. I, nope. actually, moved, I actually moved my original target. So I moved it from that zone that you've got. That's about where my zone was, where price is approaching now. That was my... Uh, that was my demand zone that I was originally aiming for. Actually, it's probably right where it is now is where I was targeting. But um, before I went to bed last night, I just moved it up a bit higher. And it's I woke up this morning. It, it, tra it closed out my trade for a nice profit. Nice. Check this out, Hemi. We've learned market structure, right? So I'm just going to delete some of these lines so that you guys can see it clearly. Sorry, Jay. I just wanted to say one more thing also is that I've, I'm learning so much in advance with you. And the difference is that I'm really learning everything. And this is even without the indicator. So it's like I can't wait to the point where I'm, we're actually using indicators, you know, to have like that extra confirmation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I don't like using indicators that much. I, I think they throw me off my game. Yeah, I'm I'm starting to move away from them more and more now. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. I, I I use them like whenever I'm clueless and, and whenever I'm clueless is either because I shouldn't be on the charts or <laughs> or my mind there right, honestly. Real quick guys, check this out before I lose this train of thought. So you see the market structure, you see the downtrend here? You see one touch. See the other touch right here? Oh, shit. Jen's uncle's here. Hold on one second. Hello? Yeah, Dougie. Hold on one second, guys. sorry about that guys so yeah so you, you guys remember the, the the market structure right we talk about lower highs right lower highs lower highs and on the last lower high right we go ahead and identify where that resistance is of that last lower high. And notice what happens. If you scroll down and you, and you draw your resistance, and I'm going to turn this line red so you can see, right where the market started to create its lower high point right here, notice how it failed to break that zone. Not only that, not only did it fail to break that zone, Right, but it also retested the fake out of that zone, which is also the same resistance as the last previous lowest high point. Mm -hmm. Make sense? So you see how I'm able to find that without without identifying anything. All I have to do is just exent, extend my zone here. See that? That is also the retest of the zone. So when the market came back, faked out, and retested, that's my clear high lot area. Make sense? Yep. yep. So 
you and, and if you pay attention as well, that's a lower high, lower yeah. high, lower high, right? If I take this trade and sell it to my last, if I identify my last zone, right? Give me one second. If I identify my last zone, all this was right here, all this was is the retest of this breakout. Yeah. Hold on one second. Hello? Yeah, I'm Betty, I'm sorry. I'm in the middle of a class. No, you good. I already opened the door for him. So yeah, so you see how how if we identify based off of the lows over here, and if all I gotta do is find the next low before that, right? What does that give us? Another little zone we can pay attention to. So when we're trading, when we're trading, here's the fake out, right? The market, when it breaks back in, what does it have to do? Retest. Retest. Yeah. Simple, right? <coughs> you see the fake out right here, Glody? And then when the market broke back in, in order to confirm that breakout, we need a what? A retest. So if the market is coming back into this area, where can we expect the retest now? At the top of this zone, as long as it doesn't break this little zone we drew here. Make sense? So that's, yeah. these are areas I pay attention to when I'm trading, right? So that I can enter a higher lot size to go ahead and, and, and enter that trade at a higher lot and know that I can pay myself at a higher dividend than maybe, let's say, like, like, you know, the retest of a, of a, a regular ret uh, resistance area. Yeah. Yeah. So real quick, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to drop off my, my, my wife's uncle in the airport real quick. If you guys want stay in this zoom, I'll pause the recording. You guys come back. If you guys want to like work with each other meanwhile, and then I'll be back. It's taking me like 15, 20 minutes. Okay. All right, that sounds good with you, Hemi? Yeah, man. It's getting late over here. I'll stay on as long as I can, though. No problem. Perfect. Oh, shit. So, I'm going to pause. No. Nah. Oh, are you? Now I just did. So, this was the downtrend we were paying attention to. Right? And let's say around here was when the market retested the price, right? Mm -hmm. And the market, you know, kind of just ranges down, breaks that line of resistance, never cleanly retested, but comes back and retests this price. Overall, we're going to see a drop. Excuse me. We're going to see a drop. Up until where? We have, we have, a, lot of, we have a lot of areas to decide that, right? So here was the drop. Here was the drop right here. It was the retest. What other type of signal did that give us, I mean, What kind of candlestick do you see there? A pin bar. There we go. Pin bar shows what? Reversal. Correct. And what did the market do after that? Boom, dropped. Where did the market come back to drop to? Is the retest of the breakout. All right? That's all you had to do. The market broke out, never clearly retested here. So it had gave us two prices it can retest. The top of the zone. Okay, but why are you screaming? It, it, it retested not only the top of the zone, but inside that zone as well. Correct? Yeah. Now that you see that, does it make it more clear for you why it's making the moves it's making? Yeah. On top of that, when the market came back up, notice where it, it, it made it move to. Yeah, straight, it bounced off that, that line, didn't it? Right at that trend line. And when, once it failed to break that trend line, what did it do? Dropped. Dropped. So how many times over the last 
week did you have an opportunity to sell that trade and profit off of it? Multiple times. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And at that, you could have entered those trades with zero drawdown, right? Zero drawdown and identified possible areas for high loss sizes. You guys understand that? Mm -hmm. Glory, Jose? Yes. Now, where does Fibonacci come into place with this, right? We speak about Fibonacci a lot, right? I'm going to look at, I'm going to look at the previous trend. Previous trend from my supply area all the way to the bottom, right? And notice what happens. When the market reaches these price points, right? Here's, here's the market retracing. It shoots up, fails to break the zone. And hold on, I did this one incorrect. Do it from the bottom of this zone. So notice how notice how our Fibonacci areas are highlighted by the touches of this uptrend, right? You guys kind of see that, um, Hemi? Yep. And we were counting based off of the touches of this trend here, where the market potentially can reverse to. But overall, what I want you to understand is right here, when the market failed to break out of this area, not only did it come back and fake out and retest that 100% line, but notice where when she dropped to, it came, hit, came back up to, and kept going. Here's our 88.6%. Here's our 78.6. Here's our 61.8. Let me delete this real quick here so we can start seeing clear what I mean. Right? And here we have an uptrend. The market trending upwards, right? The market is trending upwards. And on every touch of that trend, right? Notice what percentage we're on. Mm. Right? So we had a touch at the 23.6, shot up, came back, retested, faked out a little bit, right? Came back, shot up again, retested, right on the trend, faked out of the 61.8, came back in, done that. Jose, the way you understand Fibonacci, and I know you wanted to ask me is, these are basically your, your support and resistance areas where the market can potentially retrace at, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up a clean chart so that we can do this from the beginning and kind of have an understanding of how it affects the market, right? So here's, here's my resistance, right? On top of that, here's my supply area, right? Got my supply area. Cool. Prior to that, here's my support. What's up, baby? Here's my zone right here. All right, just gonna delete these bars. Relax, relax. Hold on, while I do that, let me let me put this kid in there. Come in, come in. Look, let's watch more power. Come, come. Come here. Come, buddy. Come, SpongeBob. Come, SpongeBob. Go. Let me get you a plate of cookies. 
Sorry about that, guys. So yeah, so Jose, um, a Fibonacci, the way I draw my Fibonacci's is if the market dropped from this zone to this zone right here, right? Forget about all this movement down here because all of this is a fake out, right? Because here's the retest. So what I'll do is I'll draw my Fibonacci from the zone to zone. And what that tells me is as the market is now going up, I can identify possible areas of retracement as it completes the full retracement from, from this downtrend. Make sense? Yep. From zone to zone, basically, eh? Yeah, one movement. Remember we were talking about one movement from here to yep. here? See how this is just one straight movement? There's no, there's no reversals like it did here, but when it did reverse, notice what it did. Uh, JL, this is on any time frame, right? You usually do that or? Correct. Correct. So, I'm going to push this right here so we can look at it. So, what happens is when you, when you, guys, when you guys start learning, if the market is, let's say, retracing back down, the way I look at the, the way I look at it and a lot of people have their own theories or whatnot. But all I understand is this. Every time the market fails to break any of these important levels, and the important levels you want to write down is the 38.2, the 61.8, the 78.6, and the 88.6. Two other levels you can pay attention to is the 23.6 and the 50%. So those are the most important levels. These are the levels I pay attention to based off of the style of my trading. Okay. And the reason, the reason I look at these levels is because once the market breaks past the 23.6 area, I'm looking for the market to fail of breaking past the 38.2 so I can ride the wave up if I'm buying, right? So if the market was dropping and it makes that 38.2, right? I'm looking, I'm looking to, I'm looking to enter that trade at the 38.2 and my take profits will either be the 61.8 or the 78.2. Make sense? Yeah. So let's look at that on the chart. So if I entered my trade at the 38.2, right? If my entry was at the retest of this breakout here, which was also an in, the shoulder of the inverted head and shoulders here, right? If this was my entry, my first take profit, if it's not the 61.8, it's the 78.6. Notice what the market did once it hit that price. Retrace back down. Yeah. Right? So what does that tell me? Had I entered here, I can notice that if it failed to break past the 50%, that's another buy opportunity. And instead of riding this trade back up to the 78.6, the next trade, I'm, the next, my next take profit will be that actual 88.6 line, which is represented in red here. Make sense? Yep. And then when I saw that the market hit that take profit, right? It hit the take profit, whatever. It kept going up. Cool. Let it do its thing. The market dropped, dropped, came back to the 50% line. What do you think I'm doing now? I'm buying again. I'm buying, and where am I buying to, Jose? 
Um, uh, to the eighty-eight point six percent line. Remember, had I bought at the thirty-eight point two, my take profit would either be the sixty-one point eight or the seventy-eight point six. So if I bought at the fifty percent line now, right? I'm riding this trade simply to the eighty-eight point six, and that's it. Hmm. Anything that it hap anything that happens after that, yo, let it do its thing. You know, and what I keep in mind is again every time. Now let me explain to you what we're looking for. If this was the market starting at zero, right? If this is the market starting at zero and it shoots and fails to break past the 38.2 line, what are we going to expect, Hemi? Pullback. A pullback, right? Strong push down. Excuse me. You got that? If the market shoots up and it fails to break the 50% line, what are we going to expect? Strong push down, just a, let, a lot less vicious as it would on the 38.2 to fail to break that. Does that make sense, Glody? Right? Here's the next one. And we'll look at, we'll look for examples of this. If the market fails to break the 61.8, going to do the exact thing. It's going to drop, but it's going to take a little longer this time if it does fully retrace back down. The market does the same for the 78.6. Same thing. Slowly but surely, it should come back down. And I'm, don't pay to the exact, don't pay much mind to the exact of how I'm drawing mine. I'm just confirming every breakout with a retest, right? Yeah. So here, Gloria, here's a perfect example, right? The market in this case shot up, failed to break the 38.2, right? The market shot up. Shot up, failed to break the 38.2. Notice what she did. Strong push down. You see that? Yeah. Failed to break the 38.2. Strong push down. The market came back, shot up to the 50%. Notice what she did. Failed to break it. Strong push down, but did not break past the 23.6 line. Right? When the market retested the breakout of the 23.6 area. She shot up, right, all the way to the 100%, and notice what she did. Slowly but surely started retracing and retesting every zone back to where it started. Now what she did this time, shot up again. Slowly but surely started retesting Right? Before, notice why the market came back to touch this zone. Because before she shot up all the way up to here, she retested back down here at the 50% line. So when she shot up here, she came back and retested here and shot yeah. up again. So where do you think this trade right here has a potential of retesting again? Or if not, breaking it, the 50% line. Third touch. That'll be our third touch. So um, it actually is our fourth touch in a sense. Because here we have one, two, three, right? Oh, yeah, that would be it. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. This could be our fourth touch. So if it breaks it, right, if it breaks it, we can see a retest and then continuation back down to our zone down here. Does that make sense? Jose, you want me? Did I lose you? 
Uh, a little bit on the touches. So, it, so it would be <clears throat> if it comes back down to the fifty, it would be the third touch in general, or it would be the fourth touch. It, it might be the fourth touch of that price point, which is a what? What, what would this be representing? This fifty percent right here. It would be representing a support a support area. Yeah, uh, demand uh, demand zone. A demand, demand zone, if you identify that demand zone, correct. All right? Let's say this is the demand zone in between this one and this one. That could be it, correct. All right? So all I'm saying is to you, another thing too, Hemi, that I forgot to mention is we were talking about this uptrend here, right? Yep. Notice the uptrend that it's, it's currently in as well. Yeah, oh, yeah. It breaks that uptrend. It, it, there's two different uptrends we can pay attention to, which gives us, again, confirmation or confluence that the market may be heading to this zone around here. Makes sense? But, Jose, what I was showing you was the example that I showed you earlier. If the market shoots up and fails to break the 38.2, right, we're going to expect a strong push down. So here's an example. The market shot up, failed to break the 38.2, right? Dame uno también. So here's, here's the market shooting up to the 38.2, right? And the market dropped because it failed to break that important level of retracement that we were talking about. So when the market shot back up, this time, it failed to break the 50%. So you remember how I was telling you, if it fails to break, if it fails to break the 38.2, we're going to expect a strong retracement, right? Now, it doesn't, it, it's not necessarily a, a full retracement all the way down, but you will expect a strong move down, right? If the market breaks the 38.2 and goes for the 50% and it doesn't, it doesn't break past that 50%. We're going to see a, a retracement back down, but it's, going to be a, it's not going to be as strong of a retracement as it was when the market failed to break the 38.2. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's why when the market failed to break on the 23.6 zone here, if you notice, look what it did. It broke it, came back, retested the 38.2, created a higher high right here or a, a, a lower high, excuse me, right? And I think if we stretch this out somewhere right here, we may see like a little inverted head and shoulders and the market shot up and broke past the 38.2 of it. And this time it came back, hit that 50% line, dropped and kept going up. Make sense? So all yeah. I'm talking to you, all I'm talking to you guys about is when the market fails to break one of these zones, how it slowly comes back and retrace. Now, as we saw with the this move right here, when it failed to break the 50% line here, all it did was come back, retest the 38.2, hit the 23.6, and kept going up. That's why, as the market shot up all the way here to the 100% line here. We came back and slowly started retracing back to the 23.6 area over here. You see? So all we did was pay attention was to this movement from the demand zone to the supply zone right here. And we can start to see how as the market hit this 100% retracement line, when it slowly started coming back, how it started respecting every level. Look here, broke past our 88.6 came back, retested it, right? Retest. The market dropped, came back, retested our 78.6 line. Boom. Dropped, right? Never came back to retest our 61.8. So why do you think that when the market approached it here, right? It dropped, came back, retested our 50% line, right? Is a 50% line it retested, dropped, came all the way to the 23.6. When it started making its move upwards, why do you think it respected the 61.8 on the upside over here? 
Make sense? Because it never retested it on its way down. So that's going to be your stop. So all I want you to understand from this, guys, is that if on your Fibonacci level, you don't see that level respected now as the market is going down, know and keep it in the back of your head that if you actually start trading the upside of it, that may be your first take profit. Mm. Or if not, if that's not your first take profit, that's where you can re-enter another trade. So if you're scaling in your trades, as opposed to putting one fat lot size and you're breaking them down into, you're entering the retest of every, of every breakout, you have that in mind. Like, yo, I know that that price right there is a good area to attack. So right now, if I'm selling the pound, I know for a fact what? That that 61.8 may be broken right now because we had one, two, we had a few touches to this price. So if it breaks that price, right, I'm going to keep an eye on that. If not, my safe side may be taking profit at that price point right there. Yeah, yeah. Make sense? Yeah. So I want you guys, I want you guys keeping that in mind. We talk, you know, we spoke about the Elliott waves, right, Hemi? Yeah. The Elliott waves, pretty dope, right? Zero, yeah. one, two, three, four, five. Why do you think five was extended? Because between two and three, it was not extended. So the rule of thumb for the Elliott waves is wave three or five is usually extended. Right? Wave three or five. All this means, Jose, is every wave, every wave is a meaning of what's happening, right? So if the market's on an uptrend, right, the start of that uptrend is the zero. Then usually where you want to sell on these uptrends is on one, three, and five. Okay? Where you want to take profit or re-enter your trade is on two and four. So if I'm riding this trade on an uptrend, right? I'm riding this trade on an uptrend. Notice how the retest of every Fibonacci line or important area of, of, of support, right? Or the, of the fib zone here is the retest. And that's also number four. Here's two, here's four. What does that mean? Very simple. Wave one. This is the initial move towards the direction of the trend. This is when a few traders think the market will go up and they start buying, causing the price to go up, right? I told you yeah. guys, I told you guys either the move between two and three, if that is not an extended push, then usually the move between four and five is the extended push. What happened? Check this out. Between four and five, the market faked out of the zone that we, were, we have drawn out here. It wasn't until the market retested here, right, where you made a drastic push, what, down. You grab your ruler from the retest of that fake out to where it ended, that's 218 pips in, in four hours, because that's one four-hour candle right here. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And you, you could have re-entered on the 61.8 and rolled it back up as it faked out. When it came back in and retested, Here's our key. Look how the market is dropping now. Now, Hemi, you remember we were talking about the corrective waves, right? Yeah. So here's five. Here's A. Here's B. Here's C, right? A, B, C. Once yeah. you saw failure here, what does this remind you of? Head and shoulders, eh? Your harmonics. Top. Yeah. Your harmonics patterns. Oh, from the bottom there, yeah. From from the whole impulsive move. Mm -hmm. So when the market hits this price point down here, we can expect two things to happen if the market fails to break up, right? And that could be either a retest of the zone here or just a simple, there's, there's many ways to go about it, you see? Mm, yeah. But here's A, here's B, here's C, here's B. What do you, what do you think is going to happen if the market does hit this point, shoot up and hit this price point again? We're going to see a 
ass drop to the down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But again, Jose, A, A, B, and C are the corrective moves that happen after the market trends in this way. So when the market's going in an uptrend like this, and you're able to identify your Elliott wave, right? The guy, um, Richard Elliott, when he di when he dis discovered this, he noticed that the market would always correct itself after making these different waves. So again, if I'm if I'm entering this trade, I have my Elliott waves, I have my Fibonacci, I have my supply and demand zones. I have my uptrends. I have my areas of retracement. I understand what? I'm going to delete these real quick. I understand what? Real quick. That when the market fails to break, when the market finally breaks past my zone, right? Anytime the market retested the top of that zone, just like it did on the last higher low point here whenever i can identify a price point where we can see a clean retest right notice how this is right away a high lot situation where we can ride that trade yeah. the upside yeah right so what are we looking what are we looking for again we're looking for the market to break and retest somewhere below here so that we can short where are we shorting to if i do sell my first take profit, if I sell in between, let's say I sell at the 61.8, my first take profit is going to be what, baby? At the 50? The 38.2. 38. Okay. Because remember, when I buy at the 38.2, my first take profit is the 61.8. So between the 61.8 to the 38.2 here, that's 121 pips. Yes. Serious. Simple. You see, you, you see how shit starts to line up when you guys start putting all the education I've been giving you guys? It's yeah. Just keeping things simple. Keeping things simple to the point where you can comprehend it. Yeah. You know? Um, here's another thing. What we tend to overlook is the possibility of what? We're looking, we're looking for opportunities to sell this market or, or trade this market, right? We got a witch. Excuse me. Here's a bullish move. Here's the rising wedge. If it does break it, right? Notice where it always comes back down to the last lowest, highest low point over here, right? Also, if we were just focusing on the Fibonacci, what does it always come down to? Breaking past the 61.8, right? What does it always come down to on top of that? It's the fourth touch of the 61.8. You see how you see how shit starts making sense? Yeah. So, again, Hemi, I know you understand this, but do you feel comfortable now understanding where you can potentially enter at a higher lot size? Yeah, man. Yep. Perfect. How how do you feel? How do you feel with the Fibonacci? Do you feel like you you, you go with them? Or yeah, bro. Yeah. What, yeah. What do you feel you've been struggling with? Um. Oh. I probably. I remembering to use everything, more than actually um understanding stuff like you sort of get off i'll probably get stuck on just uh focusing on maybe two or three things instead of instead of using all the tools there mm -hmm. i reckon that's probably why uh damn you can't shut up yeah big time mm -hmm. let's see here can you say that again, Hemi? You cut out a little bit. Um, it's more so using all the tools that I think we've learned rather than, um, you know, I sort of get focused on maybe using one or two, but I don't use all of them. Correct. I mean, just remember, man, you, you're not assuming, you're assessing. 
You get what I'm saying? Like you're assessing the chart. You're not you're not simply assuming what you believe is gonna happen. The only way you can confirm what you're what you're assuming is when you can identify whatever targets are showing you what it is that you want to see. For instance, if I'm trading USD CAD, right? It keeps shooting up, right? So what am I going to do? Right now I have I have my Fibonacci drawn out from this bullish push right here, right? Yeah. Let's go ahead and find the next push where it makes sense and why is it that the market is shooting up? Here it is. From 0 to 23.6 when the market fails to break past the 38.2 or the 23.6, what is usually the the occurrence? A strong push to the upside. Yeah. So here, here's our retracement, right? Here's the market. We did it. We did it from this uptrend right here. This one move, right? Mm -hmm. notice, notice what happened. Even if, even if I it tighten up this this Fibonacci, it failed to break the fifty percent, right? What did it do? Shoot up. If I if I extend this a little lower, from zone to zone, right? It failed to break the thirty eight point two. What does the thirty eight point two do when it retraces like that? Shoots up, right? If I bring this even lower, right? What did it fail to do? It failed to break out of this twenty three point six. If anything, it faked out of it, came back, retested, shot up. See how it all? At the end of the day, the the, the levels respect itself. So. The importance is understanding it and taking this right here. Look, I mean, here's how, how we combine everything. We have we have our Fibonacci in place. Let's go ahead and find our Elliott wave. Here's zero, here's one, here's two, here's three, right? It failed to do so, but what? Here's four, what can be number five? Somewhere up here, right? I don't know. <laughs> we hope not, right? But <laughs> if that's the case, Here's here's a zone right here that we gotta pay attention to. Yeah. Right? If the market does do that, what can we see happen? We now go grab our corrective wave. Here's here's A, here's B, here's C, hopefully. Right? And then we can start seeing the retracement downwards. If not, it can be A, B, C, and then continuation towards the upside. Yeah. But the whole point is to have this. And be able and say to yourself, okay, I understand what my possibilities are. I understand what my confirmations are. I'm confident this trade is going to drop. Let me enter this trade on a $2 lot, $3 lot, you know? And on that trade, you don't have to catch two, three, four hundred pips because guess what? You're on a higher lot size. So if you're making, looking to make $500 a day on a $2 lot size, you only need 25 pips to make 500 bucks. Make sense? But yeah. that, that, comes into, that comes into fruition with the idea of you understanding what your risk is, you understanding what your reward can be, and being able to confidently make that decision, you know, as opposed yeah. to focusing on what I can potentially earn off this trade, it's more of a focus on how confident am I on this trade. Make yeah. sense? Now, now you, for instance, do you find yourself thinking that? Or when, yeah. you're, when you're about to enter a trade, what is the first thought in your head? Yo, this is a pretty good setup. Let me sell. That's your first thought? Yeah. I, my first thought is, is um, <laughs> how, much, how much can I potentially make, I guess? Correct. I mean, yeah. But then do you ever ask yourself how much can I potentially lose? Yes. Good. That's what I want you. I, I want you to understand what your risk to reward is. You understand? I don't want you just work focusing on the reward. I want you to understand yeah. what my risk is because guess what? If I'm not if I'm not focusing on what I potentially can lose, that trade is actually more damaging on from a mental perspective, right? Than a financial perspective cuz that shit can that's you losing that trade and let's say, for instance, as a consistent trader, your goal is to do the same thing every day and confirm your analysis, right? We don't want to sit here and, let's say, ever break our routine. 
but because of an emotional occurrence, like, oh shit, I don't know what the trade can potentially do right now. As opposed to you opening your chart up and looking for your next zones or potential areas of retracement and identifying what's actually happening so that you don't emotionally panic. Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah. So, I mean, I want you guys developing that sense of thinking too, because believe me, Hemi, that's what's going to take you to the next level, man. When, when you start yeah. looking at the game that way, you're going to start saying to yourself, man, look, like I could, I could recover from any loss. Yeah, yeah. You know that makes sense to you, Jose. Um, the whole Elliott wave, I kind of got a little understanding of it, but more of what you're saying, I'm kind of getting it all in check because um, the way it goes up and it comes down, it goes up, it comes down. I'm understanding uh, more or less that all those, like you said before, is where it builds pressure, and then it starts ranging. And then right before it ranges, it got to distribute the pressure. And then that's where more or less you see it go up or down. And then that's where you decide to see where is it going to go. Yeah, 100%. So I'm kind of kind of there and kind of not. I still, I still got to watch that video on the course, the Elliott Wave one. I was going to do that today, actually. The one that I did with Hemi was really good. The one me and Hemi did together where I explained to him, that was a really good class. I think I've seen that one. Um, Glory, you understanding everything I'm saying today? Yes. What, what do you feel? What do you feel is? Uh, what do you feel? What do you feel would be an area of focus for you this week? Entering and having more of like the zones of tape profits, like entering the trades and then just. Now identifying with the Fibonacci's, the take profits. Correct. What I want you, what I want you focusing on, because the question everybody I find asking me is, how do I place? How do I know to correctly place my Fibonacci areas? Remember, we're looking for one movement, and what I mean by one movement is like I want to see one move, like down. You see how how there's a few retests here, but there's none of this. You see here, from here to here, how it's one movement, one movement to the upside. I'm not focusing on from here to down here. I'm focusing from here to here. See how that's one movement? Another one movement would be from here to here. Another one movement, and, and, and what I, why I say it like that is just, it's just one move down. You see, from here to here. You see how from here, to here, there's one move. From here to here, that's one move. From here to here is one move. From here to here is one move. You see that? And you and you identify when you start applying your zones. And let's say if you're if you want to get into a scalping mode, all you gotta do is hop on a small time time frame, right? Let me do this on an empty chart so you guys can see. All we gotta do is get on a small time frame, like the 20 minute chart. Identify resistance, right? Here's resistance, here's my zone, here's support. Here's my zone. Where's one in between? Here's one right here. Here is my next one. I start drawing my zones out. How do you become a scalper, Glory? You understand supply. You understand demand. You understand market structure. You understand Fibonacci's, right? Boom. Let's find one more. Boom. What do we want to identify? Boom. I'm being corny right now, but check out check out how the money this becomes. Here's my zone, right? Once the market fails to break past the 38.2, it failed to break past my demand zone. What am I doing? I am buying up, right? 
to my next zone, right here to here. That's 54 pips on a scout. How long did that take me? From here to here, took me seven hours to make 50 pips on this trade, you know? Guess what happens now? I'm gonna take that same Fibonacci area from here to my last zone up here, right? Cause this is the, the first drop. All I gotta do is, excuse me. As the market started retracing back down, That's in that's in that's in Jail's house, right? <laughs> no, that's my house. Oh yeah. I was like, good old New York can't go a few couple hours without hearing the siren. <laughs> so here it is, Jose. Check this out. The market dropped, right? Hit the fifty percent line. Look what it did. Came back up. Once we saw the failure, we want to see it try to retrace, right? What it did was it failed to break past the 38.2, came back in, and just kept going down. You understand? You don't really need much, guys. Here's, here's our uptrend, right? Here's our uptrend. Here's the support of our last previous high, lower high, I mean higher low. Here's the cleanest entry you'll ever find on a sell. You see why I enter my trades on the 15 minute? Because here's my trade here. Here's my entry. So it's very simple. From here to here, I wanted to ride it from zone to zone. In three hours, I would have made 51 pips. On the dollar lot, that's five hundred dollars. You see, so I want I want you guys to understand like everything I'm teaching you guys, everything that you guys have learned, is not is not a level of complete like there's not so much complexity to, behind it. It's just more of a like understanding how to properly apply it. You know that's why that's why we created the three pillars, right? Understanding it. I want you to understand it. I want you to identify it. And then I want you to apply it so that you can get good at it. We were, we were talking yesterday at my daughter's um, meeting with her counselor. And they were telling us that she has an issue with, like, she has an issue getting past the understanding of, of stuff that she learns. And, you know, I was explaining to her. I asked her, I said, what kind of strategies are you guys implying to help my daughter better understand it? Because I'm, I'm, I'm a private educator. I teach people how to do probably the most, the most hardest thing there is to do online, right? And that's trading. Mm. And, um, you know, my strategies are I help people understand the information. Until they don't understand it, we don't go work on identifying it. Because it don't matter how much you repeatedly do. If you repeatedly do the wrong thing, you're going to get the wrong result. You know what I'm saying? So who? So we were talking about that and it kind of brought back memory to me as I was saying that, like how important it is for you to work on understanding the information so that when you do go on and apply it, you're not applying the wrong information, you know? And when you're, when you're applying that wrong information is because you've been identifying it wrong. And, and, and think about, think about that. I mean, how long, how, how much has your game transitioned from when we shifted your way of identifying what we've looked at in the past to now what we're looking at now. Yeah, lots, bro. You understand? So, again, I want you, I want you consistently, consistently, and consistently doing what you guys are doing because, listen, I promise you, think about it, Hemi. This is what, March 28th. You know, you were telling me you wanted to get that $5,000 account, that account to 5000 before the end of the year. You, you yourself told me that. Yeah. You understand? And now, look at you. Yeah. Less than a few weeks. Say. Jose and Glory wanted to hit $100 on their $50 account by, within a month. And they're, they're, they're just starting week three. Yeah. And they're ready to these goals. 
Yeah, right now I'm looking at uh, one of my trades and I'm like, it's not nearly the take profit, but it's almost right there. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, yo, I'm almost at $9. I'm about to close. I'm actually satisfied with this. This is going to butt me even closer. Um, no, hold on real quick. This is going to butt me even closer. Hold on one second. Let me check this little rascal. It's like, yo. 923, that's the most I ever made on a on a one cent lot size doing anything <laughs> trading. That's incredible. That's 90 pips. Yeah, man. That's, that's impressive, Jose. I, man, I still I still will never forget when you guys were telling me I'm trying to make 10 pips a day. I will never forget that phone call between me and Glories. <laughs> <laughs> Hemi, you remember how many trips a day you told me you want to catch? Oh, I can't remember now. I got you right now. You said... Hey, by the way, GA is about to hit take profit. Yeah, I know. I just closed on mine. Hemi, I got you right here. You told me 40 pips a day. 40 pips a day, yeah. 40 pips a day you wanted to do. So you, you guys can't, you, you can't get into the habit of like, oh, I want to hit this amount of pips. Because in reality, tell me, Hemi, how many days in a row have you properly guessed the exact amount of pips you were going to catch that day? Oh, oh. Never, none. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can pers I don't I can't predict I'm gonna catch two hundred pips unless I, I catch nah, well, and end it there, you know? Yeah, that's crazy, man. Like that you say I only want a forty. I just had a look today, I'm up two hundred and four pips just for the day. That's crazy. That's what's up. Now we gotta get you trading these dollars. <laughs> What I want you to do, Hemi, though, instead of trading dollar lots, I want you to scale them in 35, 45, 55 cents, however. Yeah. Like, start trading with 50 cents, you know? Start entering 50s on your good areas of, of zones mm -hmm. and, um, and, and potentially find those, those areas for you to do that. And then, unless it makes 100% sense for you, do not hesitate on adding the, the $1 lot. Yeah. Just, you know, just, just keep it on a short leash. Like, you know, you yeah. know how much risk you can take. So if you're taking that trade and let's say you're, you're entering it at the retest of a zone, you know, like worst case scenario, the hard, the highest I'll go with this trade is, is if it breaks past that zone. So if, yeah. if these were my zones and I entered here and it breaks out of this zone, I'm just going to identify what the, the high before that zone, after that zone is broken. So see here? Yeah. That'll be my stop loss. From here to here, that's only 20 pips. You know? Yeah. You'll, you'll take a $200 loss as opposed to a $2,000 loss. Yeah, yeah. You know? Let me make this kid a bottle. You guys want to share your screen and talk a little bit? I might, uh, I might call it a night, man. Oh, that's right. I keep forgetting. What time is it for you? It's 12.40 a.m. Okay, go ahead and get your rest. I'm um, going it up again tomorrow morning, same time. Yeah, man. Cheers. You got it, my brother. I'll send you the recording.